how to set up PryTunnel. Now the first thing we'll need to do is pick a server host to install PryTunnel onto. The server host that I like to use is called Vulture and this is my affiliate link. I'll put this in the video description below. If you don't already have a Vulture account, you can use this link where you'll get some free credits to try Vulture's services. You'll save a bit of money and I'll make a bit of money. So once you've clicked my referral link, you'll be taken to this web page. Once you're here, you'll need to create a Vulture account. So you can put in your email address, pick a password and then click create an account. I already have an account and I'm already logged in. So I'm just going to click my account here. And now we're in the Vulture dashboard. You'll need to go to billing first. In the billing page, you'll either need to link up your card or link your PayPal account. Once you've done that, you'll receive some credits from clicking my referral link. Now it's time to deploy a server and install PryTunnel onto. So click products here on the top left hand side and left click on it. Once you're in products, you want to simply click this plus symbol here, left click on it, and then you'll be taken to the deploy a new instance page. Here you'll need to choose a server, so I always go with cloud compute, as this PryTunnel VPN server is going to be for myself. Continue scrolling down, and now you'll need to pick your server location. You have many options here, however I'm going to choose somewhere in Asia just to be different, and I'm going to go with Seoul, South Korea. So once you picked your server location, you can continue scrolling down, where you'll need to choose your server type. For Vulture to install PryTunnel, you'll need to click on Application. Once you're in the Application section, you need to search for PryTunnel. Just scroll down a little, and there it is, PryTunnel, and it will be installed on Ubuntu 18.04 x64. Left click on it to select it and then continue scrolling down and you'll be greeted with the server size. You have the $5 a month option, the $10 a month option or the $20 a month option. I'm going to go with the $5 a month option as a 25 gigabyte SSD, one CPU, one gigabyte of memory and a thousand gigabytes of bandwidth is more than enough for a personal and private VPN. So continue scrolling down here where you'll have the option to select some additional features. You'll have the option to enable IPv6, enable auto backups, enable private networking. I'm not going to select any of these. Continue scrolling down. You also have the option to add a startup script and SSH keys. Again, I'm not going to add any of these. Continue scrolling down all the way to the bottom here and you'll have the option to add a server host name and label. I will be filling this in. And I'm just simply going to call it PryTunnel VPN South Korea. Once you've done that, navigate to the bottom right hand corner and left click on deploy now. Scroll down a bit and you'll see that the PryTunnel server is being installed, so you just need to wait a few minutes. I'll probably speed up this video just to save some time. All right, guys, as you can see by the status, the PryTunnel server is now running. Great, so all you need to do now is left click on the PryTunnel server. So just left click on it and you'll be taken to the server dashboard here. In this area, you'll be able to see the location of your server, the IP address of your server, the username for your server, and the password. These are the SSH login details. Continue scrolling down, and you should see the URL for accessing PryTunnel, and the username to log into PryTunnel, and your password. So the username is quite simple, it's going to be PryTunnel. Let's copy the password, and then left click on your PryTunnel server link. So just left click on it and it should open here. You'll be greeted with this message from your browser that says your connection is not private. This is fine as you are connecting to your own server. So just left click on advanced here and then click proceed to your server's IP address. So just left click on it. And now you'll be taken to your PryTunnel login page. Enter in your username, which is going to be PryTunnel and then paste in your password and click sign in. All right, once you signed up, you'll be greeted with this initial setup window. Here you can pick a username. I'm going to keep the username as PryTunnel. However, I will be changing the password to something more secure as that previous password was automatically generated. Once you've entered your password, I know my password is weak. That is because it's short. However, you should put in a stronger password. Click save. And once you've done that, it's good practice to sign out of PryTunnel and just log back in with your new password. So I'm just going to log back in here. And once you've done that, you should be logged back into your PryTunnel server. All right, so let's begin configuring our VPN and adding users and organizations. The first thing we're going to need to do is click on users here. 
and we'll need to create an organization. So left click on add organization. You'll then be asked to provide a name. So I'm just going to call it Websplaining. Once you've picked your organization name, click add. Great, so you've just added an organization. Now we need to add a user for that organization. So left click on user here. Once you've clicked add user, you're going to need to give a user name. So I'm going to go with a nice generic name called John. And then I'm going to have to give John a pin. So I'm just going to enter a pin here. It has to be six digits long minimum. So I'm just going to choose one here real quick. Once you've entered a pin for your user, all you need to do is click add. Great, so now the user, John, has been added. The next thing we need to do is add a server. So click on servers here on the top and left click on it and you'll be brought to servers. Then simply click add server. Now for the name of the server, I typically go with the data center location. So as you know, I picked Korea. So I'm just going to go with Korea. And you have some customizable options here, such as enabling IPv6 or enabling WireGuard or enabling a Google Authenticator. I'm not going to check any of these. And the reason for that check in IPv6 is that I didn't launch the Vulture server with one. So once you're happy with the name of your VPN server, just simply click Add. All right, fantastic. So we've added a server now. And now what we need to do is attach the organization that we initially made to this server. So just navigate to the top right hand corner here and click attach organization. Once you've done that, the organization and the server will already be pre-selected for you. If these aren't correct, you can change them. But for me, they're correct as this is a fresh install. So all you need to do now is click attach. Great, so as you can see, it says successfully attached organization and now we're free to start our server. So just simply hit this big green start server button, left click on it and your server will start. Great, so our Korean VPN server is now running. So I'm just going to go back to users here on the top, left click on it. And as you can see, there's the John user here. And all we really need to do now is download the profile of John However, before we do that, we need to make sure we have our VPN client installed on our local device. So I'm just going to click my other tab here. And what you'll need to do is navigate to this web address here, www.openvpn.net. Once you're here, you want to click on Get OpenVPN on the right hand corner and left click on it. On this page, you'll have several installation options for OpenVPN Connect. You have Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iPhone. Now, I already have OpenVPN Connect installed on my device. However, if you do not, please select one of these and go through the installation process. Once you've done that, I'm just going to minimize my browser here. You should be on your desktop and you should see that the installation process has generated a shortcut for you. So as you can see, OpenVPN Connect here has already been installed on my desktop and here's the shortcut. So let's double click on this to open it. Great, so we've got our VPN client open now. Now let's download the user profile so that we can connect to our PryTunnel VPN server. So all you need to do now is go back to your browser and go back to PryTunnel. Once you're here, just navigate to the user that you wanna download the profile for. So I only have one user and that's John and you wanna click on download profile. It's this icon here, left click on it. Once your user profile has been downloaded, in my case, it's john.tar, all you need to do is just click this arrow here and go show in folder. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to minimize my browser. I'm just going to drag this file to my desktop so I don't need to look at this window anymore. And now let's unzip this .tar file. So to do this, you're going to need an uncompression tool such as WinRAR or WinZip. I have WinRAR installed. So all you need to do is simply right click and then go extract here. The user profile for John has been extracted. As you can see, the type of file it is, is an OVPN profile. So now all we need to do is click on file here on our client. So just left click on it, and it says drag and drop to upload .ovpn profile. You can import only one profile at a time. So all we need to do is left click on it, hold and drag it into this box here and let go. Once you've done that, you need to pick a profile name. I'm going to leave that as default. For the username, I'm just going to call it John. You have the option here to save password and connect after import. I'm not going to check mark any of these. And all you need to do is navigate to the top right hand side here and click add. 
and the John user profile for our Vulture Pry Tunnel server has been added. And you'll be able to see your server IP address here. So 141.164.42.99 is my server IP address. And all you need to do now to connect to your Pry Tunnel VPN server is to toggle your connection. So all you need to do is left click on this icon here to toggle your VPN server on. You'll be asked for a password. Now this password is your user profile pin. So in my case, I created a user profile for John and I made a pin for John, which is six characters long. You need to enter that in here. So I'm just going to enter the six digit pin now. Once you've done that, all you need to do is click OK and you'll be connected. And there we go, guys. We have just connected to the Pry Tunnel VPN server that we've just made. Why I love Pry Tunnel is that it's an easy to use open source VPN server with an intuitive web management interface. And that's exactly what it is, guys. It was really simple to create. Now you might be wondering, how can we be so sure that we are protected? And to prove that it is working and that you are connected to the Pry Tunnel VPN that you've just created, is just to simply open up your browser here. And then I'm just going to navigate to this tab. However, you go onto your favorite search engine of your choice. Mine is DuckDuckGo. And then all you need to do is type in what is my IP space address, and then click on the magnifying glass to search. And if you look at the top here, it says your IP address is 141.164.42.99 Seoul, South Korea. So we are indeed protected and connected to the Pry Tunnel VPN. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next one. Why is it so hard to let you go?